Yesterday night, I invited some friends over. Nothing paranormal had happened to me in the past few days, but last night, more than one thing happened. The first thing that happened was whilst I was getting ready in my mirror that's located in my bedroom. I saw a tall, dark figure in the mirror walk behind me to my bedroom door. I turned around and there was nothing. As I continued getting dressed and doing my makeup, I felt someone watching me the whole time and it got so bad, I had to leave my room to get ready elsewhere. Now once my friends have arrived, I didn't tell them what I had experienced, as it was late, around 1245 and I didn't want to scare them, although they've had many experiences of their own. We were talking about something not even close to the topic of ghosts, and as one of my friends was speaking, her eyes caught something, and her face dropped in terror. She kept her eyes towards the kitchen. Where the rest of us were sitting, we would have to move our heads to see the kitchen, but she was facing it. And the rest of us kept asking her what it was, as we began to grow scared at the thought of someone in the backyard. We ran over to her and I flashed my flashlight on my phone inside the kitchen and every one of us saw a pair of legs by the refrigerator. Due to being so scared, we ran up to my room without even thinking about it and that's when my friend told us what she saw. She said that she had seen a white silhouette of a head peeking at her from the top of the refrigerator. I went outside, there's a storm moving in, the wind is blowing and there's lightning up in the north, with the occasional runder of thunder. I feel silly, but I light my white candle, which I would like to know did not stay lit for more than a minute because of the wind, but I figured it's the idea of it, right? So I lit my candle and I made my salt circle. When I closed the circle, I could feel a snap. It felt like the world was lifted off my shoulders and I could breathe. I could think. I closed my eyes and began to pray. I prayed for strength and healing. I prayed for cleansing of my soul and my energy. I prayed for protection for my family and myself. I prayed for wisdom. I prayed for strength and wisdom to cleanse my home, to protect it, to help it to be a beacon of light for my family, to fill our home with love and laughter to feel the presence of the Lord when someone walks in. I prayed for God to give me energy from the earth to cleanse my home and my spirits and my family. At this point, I hear something moving on the ground. I look down and I thought it was one of our cats for a moment and I couldn't get my brain to work because it was too big to be our cats and none of our cats are allowed inside. I then realized it was an opossum. It turned and looked at me, came to the circle came there for a moment and walked away. I thought it was odd, but I continued my prayer. It wasn't until I came into the house and relayed my experience to my husband that he pointed out that he thinks the opossum was a manifestation of my prayers, my spirit animal. But this is all brand new to me. Was it just a fluke? Or could it have been something more? So when I was much younger, probably about 11 or 12, I spent a lot of my time playing outside with the neighbourhood kids on my street. One day, my parents were in the kitchen getting dinner ready when I played football with my friends outside in the yard. My parents apparently saw me walking through the garage, walk through the kitchen and walk upstairs to my room. Normal, right? A few minutes had passed and they heard the garage door open, then saw me walk inside the house and head upstairs to my room. They both saw this happen. So they stopped me while I was on the stairs and asked, who just walked upstairs? Thinking that maybe it was someone else. Maybe a friend of mine who had previously walked up to my room and they just thought it was me. Confused and a little concerned by their demeanor, I said, uh, no one. My parents then told me then and there what they just saw happen. And from the way they describe it, they saw the exact same scene two times. They heard the garage door close behind me as I walked past the kitchen and walked upstairs. Everything down to the body language, copy and paste, as if someone rewinded time and rewatched my entry to the house. 
This would be insanely odd, even if just one person were to see this, but both of my parents watched this happen. And even to this day, when I bring it up on days I see them, their stories match up perfectly. It really did seem to rattle them that day. It's something that has totally stumped us, and we have zero explanation for this insanely bizarre occurrence. Now this is probably one of the most bizarre things to ever happen to me. I was 15 at the time. One night, I was at my aunt's house just to visit one time during the cold Michigan winter. We were sledding and having a good time, and afterwards, we went inside for some hot chocolate and cupcakes. After a couple of hours talking and playing with my cousins, my aunt asked if I wanted to spend the night. I said alright, and I got all of my bedding ready and headed to the guest bedroom, while my cousins, both girls around four or five at the time, got ready for bed as well. Everyone was asleep. Or well, so I thought. This is where things got weird. I'm not that good of a sleeper. I usually wake up throughout the night, and it just so happens I did that. I had to use the bathroom, so I stood up and started to make my way to open the bedroom door. But before I made it all the way outside the room, I heard something on the other side of the door. Footsteps. At this point, I didn't think anything of them. Someone is probably just using the bathroom, right? They seemed like really heavy footsteps from afar, but then I heard them stop right outside my door. I was really creeped out, so I went back to my bed and under my covers. My door slowly creaked open. I was scared, paranoid, but I took a look at why my door mysteriously opened. I walked up to it, and nothing was there. So then, I decided to put my fears aside and use the bathroom. Everything was fine until I turned into the hallway where the bathroom was. I saw a faint figure in the midst of the darkness and my heart raced. I looked at the face and it was my little cousin. She looked scared just staring at me. We were probably like three feet apart at most. She looked at me and started to slowly weep while keeping eye contact. It wasn't your typical sibling crying. It was quiet, but it was a different cry. It was like she was scared, like she saw something, like something was going to get her. I ended up getting some guts and walked past her to the bathroom. I waited there until I heard her walk away. When I opened it, she was gone. I went back to my room and to my suspense, she was standing in there just staring. Not crying anymore, just laughing. At that point, I told her to leave and she did so. But throughout the night, I kept hearing footsteps. It's like she was playing in the pitch black, just walking around. I asked her about it in the next morning, and she said she doesn't remember, and that she just slept the entire night. I was too scared to tell my aunt about it, and I know I definitely should have. That's the last time I'm going to my aunt's house. First one was about a dream my friend's dad had when he was a teenager. He used to live in a rural area, and one night he dreamed about a mysterious black guy who asked him if he wanted to find some gold. He said yes, and the guy guided him through the woods and farms around, and he came to realise it was real places, the surroundings of a small town and family farm. The guy then stopped and pointed to a place in the ground, and told him he should dig there. He suddenly woke up, feeling kind of weird because of the dream. He says that on that same day after lunch, he did the same path the guy had done in the dream and could find the exact place. He used his hands to dig the dirt, only to find a really old golden spoon, and that left him shocked. After showing the spoon and telling the story to his dad, his dad realised really fast what was going on. Here in Brazil, just like in the USA, indigenous people and Africans were made slaves for a very long time. So his dad said that probably an African slave somehow managed to get the spoon from the house he used to work in and hide it to retrieve later, maybe after getting freedom, and sell it to make some money. But this probably never happened, and that man's spirit or maybe an angel of some kind decided it was time for the spoon to move on and revealed its position in the dream. I think that's a good theory. Second story. My uncle has a little farm of babosas. 
and other vegetables and told me a fun story about his farm. He said he has a place that almost looked like a comet had fallen and made a crater. The place was rocky and he always thought it was barren because of that. He always rejected it. Then he said he was living through a financial crisis and religiously asked for help. And one night he dreamed about a comet falling in that very place. But he says the comet was almost like a bright and living star, something good. He felt good dreaming about it. He spoke with his wife and decided to plant something there. I don't really believe that loved ones' spirits stay on this planet after they die. But I do believe that spiritual beings do roam the earth, like angels, demons, etc. I believe in God, and I'm saved by Jesus Christ, so I know in covered afterlife wise. But ever since yesterday, I've been seeing the weirdest thing. I'll call him the mystery man. I'm not sure exactly what his gender is, but its outline has a manly figure. It started yesterday evening. I was in my bedroom watching some Jack Septici and Mark Kiplia while playing The Sims 4. I'm taking a much needed break from college life with my family, so that's what I decided to do. As I looked down at my phone, I saw someone walk into my room over my right shoulder. He was in the corner of my eye and seemed to walk behind me. When I looked behind me, no one was there. I ran out of my bedroom, asked my parents if they walked into my room, to which they said no. I was so scared and they thought I was crazy. I mean, who wouldn't? I'd think I was crazy too, honestly. So I chalked it up to me seeing things. That is, until I saw it again just now. I just finished eating lunch, looked up through our living room window and saw it walking up to our porch. It walked behind a column, only to disappear on the other side of it. It never walked back out. I'm not sure what to do. I didn't say anything about this time because of what happened yesterday. It's weird to see the same hallucination twice, right? Maybe it's my mind playing games with me, but the second time it wasn't in the corner of my eye. It was in plain view. It looked exactly the same as yesterday evening's mystery man. What do I do? I've never had anything like this happen before. So I'm a year two medical student right now, and I live in Iran. My experience goes back almost to four years ago. Guess it was in 2018, when I was in high school studying for my final exams, year 12. We have two houses which are right beside each other. One is bigger, and me and my other family members live in that, and the other smaller one was actually not our first. We bought it from our dead neighbor's grandson after she died but not in the house she passed away, in hospital. I think she had cardiac problems and we could always hear her screams and cry because of her pain when she was alive, because the walls are very thin. It's almost like two rooms in an apartment, but houses instead. Also, she had some relationship problems with her other family members, mostly the grandson who was addicted to drugs. And also, he was doing a lot of illegal things like stealing. So most of the time, we would hear the cops coming to her house, and I think that's how she got really sick. Anyway, after she died, we bought the house, and made some changes to it, like changing decorations, painting walls, adding more rooms, and also, we put a door between the two houses so we could enter it without going out in the street and opening it from outside. So basically, we changed it just for guests and friends when they come to visit us, but I personally used it for a study place because it was silent all the time. So as I said, this experience was in my exam days, where I used to study all night in that house alone and go take the exam tomorrow morning. I was there for like three or four nights before things got strange and everything was actually fine, except that I always felt like something or someone was watching me, making me paranoid and things like that. I'm actually not really in a good mental state by the way, because my mom got divorced and left me when I was six and my medical university and studies making me even worse. So I might actually have paranoia. So I stayed some nights in the house until the night before an exam, which was about hygiene and stuff like that. It was almost like 300 pages of BS that you had to just memorize every single word in a page. 
So it was really making me angry. It was 3 or 4 a.m. and as I was reading, there were some noises like water filters coming out of the kitchen. But I didn't really care about it because we've been using these filters for years and I was familiar with its sounds. Five or ten minutes later, the sounds got a little too much and weird. Until I realised we haven't put any water filters in this house and they're in the other one. So at this point, I just thought maybe it's some water problem in the kitchen. And then I just went there checking under the sink and everything was okay. No sound, no nothing. I drank some water from the fridge and went back to my book. As soon as I start reading like two or three lines, the noises start again. But this time it was almost like someone knocking from under the sink where it was a wooden cabinet. At this point, I was really kind of mad and tired because of the exam. And I just don't know why the first thing I did we started swaying swearings to the noises. And suddenly after I said that, the sound started to get louder. I felt a little bit strange, but don't know why I said it again. And surprisingly, it got even louder. So I did this for four times and each time the sounds and knockings got louder. And after the fourth time, I just stopped doing anything. Did not have any idea of what kind of thing was going on. And I was just in that fight or flight state. I was almost having a heart attack, but quickly got my book and ran away from there to the other home where my family members were sleeping. I just slept the rest of the night, not even studying because I just couldn't clear my mind of what just happened. I've told this to all of my family members and none of them believe me because they know I watch too many horror movies and I like scary things, so they think I'm just making it up. But I'm 100% sure that they also had strange experiences as well. For example, my grandma once told me she had seen the stairway light just turning on and off by itself. She also said she could clearly hear the light switch as well. Also, my aunt encountered strange things in the house. So just to let you know, my dad bought a massage chair for my grandma a few years ago so she could maybe stretch herself with that a little, but she's always afraid of it, so barely used it back in those times and now she doesn't even go near it. So once my aunt came to visit us, we gave her the room where we put the massage chair because it's too big to put it somewhere else. She told me that on her first night, sometime around 12 or 1am, when she was trying to sleep, the chair just started moving up and down like someone was on it, trying to get a massage. She said that she was so freaked out that she couldn't move out of bed. She just stayed there and a few moments later, it started to turn off and get back to its normal way and move backwards all by itself again. By the way, I don't say that it's definitely paranormal activity or something, because maybe it was just a problem of the chair itself. But I think it's kind of strange that the chair started doing a massage plan midnight by itself. And also this thing never happened since then, at least not as far as I know. So these were my paranormal experiences and I should mention that I don't say they're definitely paranormal or anything like that. They're just weird things that happened in my house, which I don't have any idea of their causes or reasons. Maybe it's the old woman ghost haunting the place, or some other things like demons or gins as we say it here. Or maybe it was just some electricity and water pipe problems that we haven't found out yet. I stayed at the Magnolia Hotel in downtown Dallas this past Saturday through Thursday. I visit Dallas occasionally for work and I had actually stayed at Magnolia before, about three years ago. Even though the hotel is old and one could say it's creepy by nature, dim lighting, old decor etc, my last day was extremely pleasant. I just thought it was a cool historic hotel with big rooms in a great location, which is why I booked it again. This time was not the case. I got in on Sunday evening and there was a funky smell in the lobby. It was pungent, kind of like those flowers that smell like vomit. I didn't think anything of it. It's in an extra touristy part of Dallas with tons of bars and it could have actually been the smell of vomit. Who knows? There was one man at the front desk who got me checked in quickly. I had booked a regular room and he said he was upgrading me to a suite since I was staying for four nights. I was excited about the upgrade, thanked him and walked to the elevators to go to my room, 
2202 on the 22nd floor. The elevators opened and the first notable thing was how hot it was. Dallas is quite warm right now, but the lobby was comfortable and this felt more like the heat was on. Hot, stuffy air. I didn't think anything of it, other than it was weird for them to keep the heat on when it's been almost 90 degrees over there. The floors are pretty big with two halls, one to the left and one to the right immediately after you get out of the elevator. Mine was to the left. I passed maybe six other rooms and got to mine. I opened the door and I don't know how else to describe it other than I had a really bad vibe. It was dark and dingy and then just felt bad in there. Like from the hallway to my room felt like totally different energies. It was weird because I felt kind of scared and fearful but wasn't sure why. Like I couldn't control the feeling from my mind or gut or wherever the hell the fear comes from. I tried turning more lights on to make it less creepy but all the fixtures are old. So even with every light on it's still pretty dim. I didn't want to overthink it, so I unpacked and went out to grab some dinner. I came back to the hotel and just went through the same motions. The noticeably bad smell in the lobby. The noticeably warm 22nd floor. And the awful feeling that came over me as I walked into my room. I started getting ready for bed, and that's when the weird shit started happening. There's lots of shiny surfaces in the room, like two TV screens, glass tabletops, and framed art. Every time I looked towards one of these objects, there'd be some kind of unexplained movement in it. I wasn't seeing a specific image or anything. It was more like a reflection or shadow walking past behind me, or a weird shift in the lightning slash glare. I would hold still and look behind me to try and understand what was happening, but I couldn't make sense of it. The room was a suite, so it was pretty big. It was laid out long with a small kitchenette when you enter. Dining and TV area, bedroom and bathroom. There were three or four times where I'd be in one area and see something walk by in the room next to me, out of the corner of my eye. It was one of the most unsettling feelings I've ever had, but I just kept thinking I had to be imagining things. I'm about to go to bed and I hear a loud noise coming from the closet. It was like the sound made when you open a shower curtain really fast and the metal hooks roll against the metal rod. I opened the closet and five pieces of clothing I had hangers on are swaying slightly back and forth. I think I'm going fucking crazy at this point. I try to sleep. It's obviously very hard after all that, but I really try. Convincing myself that I need to get sleep so I stop imagining things. At around 1.30am, my body gets so hot. I'm confused because my room doesn't feel hot and my bed still feels comfortable, but my body is very warm. I fall asleep for about 30 minutes and I wake up really startled. I didn't hear or see anything, but it was that feeling you get when someone shakes you while you're sleeping and you wake up abruptly and confused. Then a few seconds later, I feel a tug at the end of my bed towards my feet, like someone is pulling lightly on my sheets. I scream and get up to turn the lights on. I'm just super scared at this point looking all around the room trying to find something. I consider calling the front desk but for some reason do not. I just leave the lights on and look at my phone for a while and get a really awful night of sleep. I'd say I slept for about two hours on and off. I wake up tired but feeling alright all things considered. I set the thermostat to 60 and I go to work and go about my day fine. Not really even stopping to think about what happened. That night I went to dinner with some co-workers and they asked me how my hotel was. For whatever reason, I don't want to tell them what happened. I had this feeling come over me like I wasn't supposed to talk about what happened. At least not at that time. I go back to my room that night and within the first few seconds I'm in there, a shadow walks by again. But this time, it's inches next to me to my left. I'm freaked the fuck out and it looked like a tall man. I didn't see a face or person, it was more like an opaque shadow. But I could tell it was a man the same way you can be walking down the street and tell a man, woman or child was next to you without looking at them. I run towards the door but stay in the room. I called my boyfriend and told what I saw and he said I had to be imagining things. 
but if I was really worried, I should call the front desk and ask someone to check my room. I hang up and pull up the number to the concierge, but can't bring myself to call it. I had a feeling come over me telling me not to talk about what was going on, and I should stay. These events ended up happening every single night. It was almost like I was living with a roommate. There was constant movement. Someone would walk past me in an adjacent door frame throughout the entire stay. The reflective surfaces would show unexplained activity in them. My body would get boiling hot around 1.30am and I'd wake up confused followed by a tug at my feet. I kind of got used to it. Don't get me wrong, I was absolutely terrified the entire time but I had this feeling like I had to keep quiet and get through it. The last two nights also felt a bit different. I was still scared because of all this weird shit happening, but I didn't feel like I was in any danger. I was scrolling through my texts and last night I texted my boyfriend, I'm so tired of these shadows watching me, it's getting old, really casually while I was half asleep. I was so excited to check out this morning. I packed up now, avoiding all reflecting surfaces and went downstairs. I grabbed a coffee and had to pee before I left, but obviously didn't want to go back to the room. So I went to the bathroom in the business centre. I go to wash my hands and two sinks over, the automatic soap dispenser, one pump and the water runs about 30 seconds, as recommended by the CDC. As I was leaving, I went lingering at the front desk for a while, considering telling them what happened to me. I wait for the other guests to clear and go up to the one young girl working there. I ask her if anyone ever reported paranormal or unexplained things happening at the hotel. She said no, but that she was new and not sure. Then she asked me what room I was in and she said, oh that's weird, they told me to never put people in that hall. She then asked me who checked me in and when I told her, she said she didn't know anyone that fits the description. Again, she said she didn't work there very long. I didn't take it too seriously and I felt delirious at this point. I was waiting for people to pop out like I was on some kind of prank TV show or something. Once I checked out, I felt more comfortable talking about it. I didn't get into details, but I did tell some co-workers that my hotel was haunted, and immediately their responses were, was it the Adolphus? Which is supposedly very haunted, with a history of murders and freaky shit, and it's next door to Magnolia. Apparently, Dallas is very haunted, which is news to me, but probably not any of you reading this. I'm 17, and I was blessed to have my great-grandmother with me, up until this year. I lost my uncle in 2015 when he had recently turned 21. I speculate murder, but it was blamed on his own hands. I had a dream where he stood in my house and told me, I'm just here to say I will have to visit again soon. I don't think a lot of it. I thought I was just missing him again like always, even though I was raised with the paranormal being the norm. It wasn't until a week later that I realised the meaning of my dream, when my mom called me up while I was sleeping away for the weekend, her words just being, Grandma's gonna die. It was very sudden, because even at 91 she had been so healthy, and suddenly she was bedbound, not being able to consume anything. I realised my uncle was visiting to pick up our beloved grandma. I got to see her two days in a row, even though I couldn't stand seeing her in such pain. The second night when I came home, I broke down, begging my uncle to take her, but that he had to visit me before he did so. The day after, which was the 3rd of the 3rd, 22, I went out to go outside to clear my mind. We would visit her again that night. When I told my mom I was about to leave, I saw a dark, tall shadow pass me in the corner of my eye. My uncle was a very large man. So just like I asked, he had visited me before he took her with him. When I came home again, I had heard my grandma had passed away. Cookie, as we like to call her, lived a long 91 and left us on the 3rd of March 2022, around 3pm. And I would like to believe she's been picked up by my best friend, who was also my uncle, who had a short life and had to leave us on Father's Day 2015.
I don't know if this would fall under the paranormal, but I'm not exactly sure where else to put it. Some people may be familiar with the game Red Door Yellow Door. It's this psychological game that puts you into some type of trance really quickly, or at least it worked fast when I played it. I'm 16 now and played this game when I was 14, which made it a lot scarier because of my maturity at the time. I forgot to mention that this game is very scary, depending on the situation and the person that's in the trance. Anyways, I was at a sleepover with me and four other girls, and was at my best friend's house for the sleepover. We put my friend, I'll call her Emma, in the trance, and it was super scary. She wouldn't get out of the trance and was choking, and we couldn't get her back into the conscious state. Emma ended up waking up, but was not the same at all. She was very monotone with her speech and her personality seemed to have drained right out of her. This didn't just last a couple of minutes, but lasted an hour or two. We ended up going in the room just to hang out and we were so creeped out by the way she was talking. It was like a horror movie as she had gotten possessed by something. Time went by and we were in the kitchen because she was thirsty and she was drinking. At that time, I was looking through my camera roll and saw the picture we took as a group right before we played the game. I got creeped out and deleted the pic and right after I deleted it, Emma spit up a drink and went back to normal. Went back to her funny personality and didn't really know what was going on. I forgot to mention that a big part of the game is to get away from this scary man. I can't exactly remember. But Emma said that in the time that she was in her head, she was getting choked by this scary man and then it only felt like 30 seconds to her, and then she remembers waking up. But to us, it was more like two hours when she was acting all weird. But our parents don't really believe us. They all just think that it's a joke or that she was playing with us. But we were all scared, absolutely shitless, and Emma would never do something like that or pretend. It was actually the scariest day of my life. I'm always probably leaving out details, because I don't really remember it all since it was like two years ago. I'm a teen boy and unlike my father, I very much believe in the paranormal. My mother and father are divorced and my mother is very much into spiritual and paranormal stuff. That's where I got it from. And my dad loves scary stuff like horror movies, so do I. And last year around March, I started seeing stuff at my mom's place. I started seeing hands around corners or on the floor. My mom and older brother brushed it off as an overactive imagination since I love horror movies. And then at my dad's, I started seeing shadow people occasionally. Keep in mind, all of these would happen every couple of months until eventually at my mom's, they stopped. But the spirits at my dad's never stopped. I rewatched Conjuring 2 and since I love to draw, I drew the nun. A demon nun from the movie franchise. A big mistake. Everything went up to 10. Shadow people peeping at me through my doorway. Doors opening on their own. Whispers and many more. My friends would see stuff in my room while we were on calls too. People in my closet hear whispers. During the summer, my best friend came over to hang out and he saw something in my window. The same thing my other friend saw in that same window two months earlier. She never told me she saw it until I started asking my friends if they had seen anything at my house. She then told me and I was mortified. I hated it. I told my dad and told me I'm on the devil's lettuce. I wasn't. But then he told me that my great aunt was a psychic. And now all the kids in his generation and my generation of the family have powers. But we don't have much except for me. I think I got more than everyone else. I see stuff that my family can't. I hear the stuff that my family can't. I feel stuff that my family can't. I remember feeling more scared than ever because not only were these ghosts targeting me, but my dad didn't believe me. I felt alone. I took down the painting and everything kind of stopped, but I still feel stuff in my room. I still see stuff. I still hear stuff. Just not as much as it used to happen. I hate being alone in that house. It scares me, but my dad doesn't believe me. I don't know what to do. Help.
yesterday, we had another weird occurrence in the house. My parents have left the week for vacation, which leaves only me, my younger sister, and my older brother. None of us are the type to joke about this. I was in my room playing video games with my earphones on, when my brother called me and asked if he felt an earthquake, and I thought, what? He heard shaking in the living room from one of the tables we have. The table that shook was one of those makeshift tables and holds a lot of my mum's boxes and glass things, since she's a saleswoman. This was by the window, and my brother was spooked out because he couldn't figure out how it managed to shake. His door was wide open, and he was too creeped out to look in the direction when it happened. He rolled out the dog outside because he would have heard his nails against the window. Me and my sister live on the other end of the house, and we were both in our room, so we had nothing to do with this. He was freaked out that he left the light on and slept on the opposite end of his bed, so he wasn't facing the door, since it was right in front of his room. He told me about how sometimes he hears weird knocking on his wall that's connected to the garage, which is far away from all the other rooms. We've had other weird, unexplained events. About a month ago, my sister was taking a video of her cat meowing to send to her friend, when her doorknob began to shake and she caught it. It was dark outside her room and everyone was also in their room. I'm close to her and can confirm this. My parents were in their bed and my brother is once again across the other end of the house. None of us were fucking with her. A few months before that, I'm taking a shower and going into my room to just lay down. I hear a detergent bottle drop, along with my parents' door closing right in front of me. I thought nothing until my sister came in asking me if I did that and I thought, huh? Her and my parents thought it was me, but it never was. Somehow, the detergent bottle dropped to the floor and my parents' room closed on itself. And I had already been in my room a good while, so it couldn't have been caused by me. We lock our doors sometimes, only to find them unlocked mysteriously the next morning. I had this one time, but ruled out that maybe someone in my family did open it, but just forgot. Today, it unlocked for my sister and it couldn't have been me, and my brother has been knocked out for hours. We have older stories, like our older cat scratching at my door when I was gone for a day. My sister opening my door and imagining someone sit on my bed for a split second, which could have just been her eyes fucking with her. We have our Marco screaming one time in the middle of the night, but that could have just been him messing with us. He screams sometimes when he's scared or when he just wants attention. Him screaming in the morning is normal, but not in the middle of the night, which has only happened once. Which, by the way, it's not screaming like in the videos you see people share of their parrot. It's like shrieking, like he's screaming for blood murder. It wakes me up and scares the shit out of me. I hate it when he does it. He does it in the morning to grab my parents' attention when they're getting ready for work, and he wants to go out. I don't really care about these unexplained events, but they're events that confuse the shit out of us. I always have this paranoid feeling in the back of my head that someone else is in the house with us. Whether it's something paranormal, or some random person in the house. I was stationed in the Ivory Coast in 2002. I got to know the locals fairly well. My parents were Muslim converts, but I was more agnostic than anything. I used to pay people to cook for me. $20 would fill up someone's pantry there. I spoke Arabic, and the locals I got to know also spoke it. One day, a local called Kashif asked me if I wanted to pay a visit to a neighbour who was possessed, and they were praying over him. I said, sure, why not? It wasn't anything like Hollywood. It was kind of peaceful. The possessed guy was chill. There was no deep growling voice or anything. He looked at me and asked what that thing was, pointing to my shirt. I've had a charm my mother gave me since I was a teen. It's a tiny leather triangle with something inside and it's supposed to ward off evil. Usually worn around the neck or right arm. This was pinned inside my shirt, behind my front pocket. There's no way anyone would know. I played dumb and said my pocket was empty. He said no, underneath. So I unbuttoned my shirt and made sure my fingers covered it and said, what? He said, under your fingers. I got a chill. 
I said, how did you know? And he said the name of a guy who had passed away years ago. He was the guy that wrote the charm back in Australia. I noped out. Back at base, I stood in front of the mirror trying to see if there was any kind of giveaway. Nothing. I spoke to Kashif later and he said, Jin can sense these things. At that point, it was like I was asleep my whole life and there were other forces out there. I read more into their belief of Jin and frankly, I was terrified for a while. When my daughter was four back in 2016, she'd have night terrors every night. Her room was down the hall. Every night, usually between 2 and 4 a.m., she'd call out mum once or twice. And if we didn't answer, she'd run down the hallway and practically bust our door open, scaring the shit out of us. We had wooden floors, so the footsteps were loud. I'm a light sleeper, and I always heard her, but she'd be there before I could get up. My wife's grandma overseas was really sick, and she wanted to go visit her for a few weeks with my daughter. I'd never really believed in the paranormal until one particular instance involving a djinn in 2002, while stationed in Africa. Since then, I wouldn't dismiss things as easily as I used to, but I still try to rationalise anything weird. When I came back from the airport, the house felt sort of eerie all of a sudden. It never did before, but tonight was just different. It felt like there were eyes on me everywhere. I'd converted to Islam in 2008, and I thought, hey, when in prayer, you're invisible to any evil. So let's just pray right in the middle of the dark corridor and give whatever it is the middle finger, figuratively. When it came for me to prostrate, I couldn't. It felt like there were people standing around me waiting to jump me. I had to break the prayer. That's a no-no usually, unless it's something life-threatening. But I lost. I bitched out and I felt ashamed. So I went to my bedroom, closed the door and prayed again. Apparently, if you show them fear, which I did, they become emboldened. I went to bed and at around 3am, I heard my daughter call out mum. She was overseas with my wife, so I figured my mind was just used to her calling out every night and dismissed it. Admittedly, I was creeped out a little. The next night, the same thing happened. Again, I thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me. I stayed awake and started a book called Snow Crash. It was a great book, so I read for a while. The third night, I was out with my friends at a cafe. I got home around 1am and I couldn't sleep, so I read the book. It was so good I lost track of time. Then I heard, Mum? This time I was awake though. Everything was dead silence and I was trying to concentrate on whether I actually heard it or not. Then there it was again, Mum? But it sounded off. I didn't even have a chance to be creeped out enough before I heard footsteps running down the corridor towards my room. Before they got to my door, all I could manage was no, and they stopped. I was shaken. Like, man, I've seen war, but this was a different level of fear, you know? I read every prayer I knew and gathered the courage to step out. I turned on every light in the house, recited an incantation in every room and closed the doors. I pulled every door closed and checked that it was indeed latched. I didn't sleep, but when I got up the next morning to make breakfast, my daughter's bedroom door was open, only hers. I slept at my mum's house for the next few weeks. When my wife got back, I told her and she called me a bitch. It's just gin, all nonchalant. I guess if it were, they were more afraid of her. Hell, I was afraid of her. About 15 years ago, my family was haunted for two consecutive years by a ball of light that we named Bol, in hopes of befriending it. Sounds kind of weird, but we interacted with it so much we considered it as a pet to cope with the situation. It all started suddenly, while my brother and I were laying in bed trying to fall asleep. Suddenly, a loud bang was heard on one of our windows. We started to feel odd, but assumed it was just a bird. Then another loud bang. We almost simultaneously arose from the bed, only to meet a pure ball of light greeting us. 
inside the room, just hovering. It was the first time we were both ever frozen with fear. An eternity went by until it zipped out of the window with another loud bang. Did you see that? My older brother asked as he got up to check on our little sister. Surprisingly, she was sitting on her bed, head tucked into her knees, crying. She had witnessed the same thing. We all rushed to wake our parents, who were pissed. We must have all been making it up just to annoy them. Several weeks of this passed, seeing Bol every day, until we just tried to ignore it. Maybe if we don't give it any attention, it will go away, we all agreed. Bol did not. Bol demanded our attention. It started to continuously cause the bang at our window for what seemed like hours at a time, while my brother and I just laid in bed frozen with fear. At times, it would hover over us. I remember trembling and shutting my eyes as hard as I could as it hovered my face, not being able to block out Ball's light. Like unwillingly looking at the sun with your eyes closed, but fear is making you powerless to turn away. My brother looked into Ball one night as it hovered over his face. I'll never forget hearing my older brother scream out, begging for me to help him, and I just laid there. His screams awoke my parents who rushed upstairs. Ball zipped out of the room with a loud bang, which my parents heard. I was blamed for throwing objects and using a flashlight to scare my brother. Months of this continued, and then on a Friday, as my family was sitting down for our traditional movie night, Ball decided he wanted to watch it. We heard a loud bang at a window, and my dad paused the movie. What the hell was that? Our TV turns to static. We all sat there frozen, which frightened us kids even more. See, my dad is 6'4 and was once a professional powerlifter and bodylifter. For him to show fear, we thought was impossible. Then with another loud bang, Ball hovers through the window and stops beside the TV. We all just continued to sit there, silent. Then he was gone with another loud bang. The TV is now black, silent and unable to turn back on. Ball started to visit more often and even during the day destroying our electronics and mental health. We started going to church frequently, banning what electronics we could, even sleeping with blindfolds and earplugs. Any outside help we sought, we were accused of being crazy or told we invited it on ourselves. We spent a lot of time away from home to the point where we would purposefully overstay our welcome at the houses of friends and family. We were crazy in a way. We were alone and helpless. Another thing I'll never forget is my mom hysterically laughing and saying, Ball, can't you wait till after dinner? Just go ahead and sit down at the table then if you're going to be that way. As the light flickered and the pots and pans banged, and she meant it too. We all hoped it would just sit down and eat with us, just so it wasn't so alien and hard to understand. The two years this took place I look back as the most miserable years of my life. My whole family does, so we don't speak about it. The whole family has seen a therapist to help aid in the trauma it caused and we're still impacted by it today. I'm hoping that by sharing my family's story with others, that perhaps some explanation may be given as to what Ball was and what it wanted. Maybe others have had their own Ball. I like to believe it was some newborn extra planner entity that was curious and it never meant any harm. I also do like to believe it never happened, but something that impacted my life so much is hard to forget. So this is kind of hazy. 15 years on, but I'm recollecting it just as I remember. So when I was 17, my beloved granddad died. He died in April 2006. In the same year, my parents went on holiday for two weeks, leaving me to watch the house. I had a boyfriend who basically moved in for the fortnight, as well as my third wheel best friend. The first week was kind of inconspicuous, but there was kind of odd stuff. I'd hear noises in the kitchen where we were sitting eating our dinner, which would make us all stop looking at each other and then carry on. One night, me and my boyfriend went to bed and left my best friend downstairs with a guy who she was kind of seeing. I assumed things were getting hot and heavy. Five minutes after going to sleep, I awoke with a huge bang downstairs. I rushed downstairs to see the two candle holders that were wedged onto a nail on the wall had both fell off simultaneously. This freaked me out. 
My granddad was proper old school. Two kids getting it on in someone else's house would have been so disrespectful to him. Anyway, I calmed down, called my auntie and told her everything and how scared I was. She came up to check on the house. Week after, I invited a few friends around for a little drink. They all knew the stuff that had been happening. Noises, flashing lights, candles dropping, but still came around regardless. Anyway, I left the house briefly to go and meet another friend to walk back to mine. Upon returning, everyone was subdued and acting weird. I asked my best friend what was up. She said a wine bottle had been hurled straight from the empty dining room to the back garden and smashed in the middle of everyone. There was no one in the dining room and my friends aren't arseholes. They're not the ones to do stuff like this. I was obviously distraught at this point and asked everyone to leave. And my best friend said they didn't want to tell me as they know how I've been all week. I let my auntie know. The day after, I went to my granddad's grave and asked him to stop as he was really scaring me. It was an awful fortnight in retrospect. A few years prior, before my granddad's passing, I was downstairs watching a PPV main event. Got myself comfy for the night, snacks and duvet. It was about one hour in and I heard the loudest heavy breath coming from the dining room adjacent to me. I booked it up the stairs at the speed of lightning. I woke my dad up and told him, asked him to go and get my duvet, so we did. Five minutes later, there was an almighty thud and the grandfather clock on the wall fell off. Ten years it had been on the wall. Fast forward to now, and my mum, who is the most sceptical person, says she's woken up a few times to a feeling of the quilts being pulled from her, and to wake up, and they have been. I have two small kids. My daughter is three and my son is almost 20 months old. I've lived in my family home for my whole life and have been accustomed to the feeling of the paranormal in my life. My sisters have always been connected and have had vivid dreams of the same thing happening in the house without everything I ever have talked about prior. They've both dreamed of a door connecting the attic to the basement. A dream that only started with each after a small locked door near our basement was opened and couldn't be closed again. They even had the dream passed down to my niece but a different house, but same principle. When my parents first moved in before I was born, they found a box of black and white candles wrapped in aluminium with coins. My daughter says she sees ghosts and even now, when my son was scared having just fallen asleep, she was communicating with it telling it to leave her buddy alone. I'm starting to get scared it's going to hurt them. Me and my siblings each had our own dreams where we fought some type of entity. One of my sisters even had to scream at something looming over her daughter's bed in a dream. In order to get at the kids, it would have to go against her again and her two girls haven't been scared again. My girlfriend is always jumpy. She's explained she's felt scared, watched, followed and even chased. I believe her experiences and she believes that it wants to hurt our kids. I just don't know how I can help. I feel that since I've lived here for so long, it can't and won't mess with me as much because I don't fear it. But my girlfriend and kids don't have the tolerance built up, which in my mind gives it power to hurt them, making me scared and worried for their safety, which feeds it more power and it keeps going in a cycle only worsening. Four years ago, my best friend passed away. Ever since he died, I felt his spirit around me. I've never had that big moment where I see his full body apparition and we have a direct conversation, but starting the day after he passed, things move around me. It was little things at first, a pen would roll off my desk. Pieces of paper would move around. I just wrote it off as wind or something, but then bigger things would move. A glass would tip over. Silverware would slide away when I'd go to reach for it. Then the knock started. They're usually soft and only happen late at night. I've tried to get them to respond to questions with knocks, but they only seem to happen once or twice before stopping. I've never felt scared about the things that happen around me. 
there's always a sense of peace that accompanies paranormal experiences. That, and the timing of them, is why I'm sure it is my friend. I honestly enjoy it when he shows me that he's still there. The thing is, I've never told anyone else about these experiences because I don't want to be labelled as a weirdo. On top of that, I suspect the reason that my friend has been hanging around with me is due to a very personal and private matter. It hasn't really been an issue for the past four years. It was just part of me that I could keep to myself and deal with on my own. But now that I'm in college, other people have seen things. It happens with enough regularity that I can't keep explaining it away. My roommate has flat out asked me about it a few times now and seems kind of freaked out about it, even though I always keep my cool and say it's nothing. I'm really afraid that if I tell my roommate that I have a ghost following me, he'll either freak out and want to change rooms or think that I'm a freak and distance himself from me. My nephew stays with me and my parents about every week for one or two days and lately he's talking about a mister he sees and sometimes fears. The days are mostly Tuesday and Wednesday when he's not in daycare but due to circumstances we also take care of him on the weekends when needed. Now I read about young kids being able to have a connection towards the paranormal side and I try to make some sense of what he's saying with the info online on many boards but none felt somewhat relatable. I'll give some background information I can think of to make an image on how the conditions are and the situation we live in as a family to this point. Please note, none of us are actual believers in the paranormal or religious kind, even though we're open-minded enough to say we cannot explain everything. It all started a few months ago after my parents told me that my nephew started talking about ghosts in the middle of the day. At first I laughed it off and felt like they were being dramatic about some trivial thing they never experienced with me and my younger brother. The day my nephew started talking about this was also the first day I wouldn't be home for a couple of days as I was staying in a hotel for work. Further down I'll explain why this will be significant towards this. Now after about two months I went away for six days and my nephew stayed with just my parents like he normally would except for me. And yet again, he started saying things about ghosts and how particular a mister directly to me without mentioning its grandparents. He was saying this when I phoned in to check on my parents and how the thing were going and happened to got to him on the line. My mother was baffled when she heard him say this to me and thought it was a one or two thing and didn't take it seriously until that point. For me knowing, he didn't tell his grandparents, but his then absent uncle gave me some weird vibes. Now it's the weekend. I got back home and he's staying with us for a few days, along with his three month old brother and the dog. This is not uncommon for us, except for the youngest one being here for the first time. What makes it for me to write all this is actually what happened next. The day went like it normally would, with me playing football with my nephew and monkeying about in the backyard like we always do until the little man needed to go to bed around 8 or 8.30. I took him to bed in the same funny and crazy uncle way. I'd get him to bed as I always do, read a bedtime story, took him in, and for this time, I would fix some of his toys. In my experience with my nephew, he stays up a little longer to play with his stuffed animals and then falls fast asleep. Except for tonight. The first time I heard noise coming from upstairs was him complaining it was too dark in his room. I reassured him and he would go back to sleep. After about an hour, I heard a dull bang come from his room. When I went to check on him, he was standing next to his bed crying while all the cabinets were opened. When I tried to comfort him, he was talking about the mister again and pointed to an empty corner of the room. When I promised him I would stay with him, he almost fell asleep instantly. And this all I know for now what happened around here and I'm not sure how to act on this, if it would keep on occurring. My parents are in their early 70s, being from the boomer generation. Father is a dyslectic work class guy with a love for soccer. In the last few years, I think about somewhere in 2018, 
he started to deteriorate mentally and border on dementia systems. Mother is a stoic, self-sufficient woman with a Catholic background and had a bleeding at her brain in late 2021 from which she's still recovering. Myself, I'm a 32-year-old single with no kids. Living back with my parents since 2019 to help them out financially about to save up some money for a new house which backfired to the COVID. My brother and his wife are no keen believers of the paranormal and try to be the best parents they can be. My brother was actually the type of guy carrying the nickname The Tank. Nephew was born with a defect that happens in less than 1% of all children. That's born but treatable when the right care is available. Further, he's now healthy and laughing little juggernaut. Youngest child, a healthy born little pooping, crying and eating machine. I'm looking forward to seeing what all of you are interested in, thinking all that I'm just getting paranoid. But I have the feeling something is happening that I cannot explain to myself. 